again. Uh, so now I've, I've got a sketch of the periodic table on the board. I'd like you to write some things on your periodic table for class. Uh, we're going to write two things, but one we're going to focus on very soon. Um, so the two things we're going to write are the number of valence electrons that some atom has, and the second thing is the ionic charge we predict. So uh, we've got, this is, this is group 1, group 2, this is group 3 through 12. Group 3 through 12 are called transition metals. And for the transition metals, we're not going to write anything above them. Um, it's some of the, the elements there, they will, will tend to form more than one ionic charge. So we'll just leave that alone for now. We're going to look at the elements that are a bit more predictable. And that includes elements in group 1, group 2, and groups 13 through 18. So you should see those numbers on the periodic table. That's called your group number. Those are your columns on the periodic table. Um, they also can be called your families. Right? Some of the groups have a family name. Group 3 through 12 collectively are called transition metals. So I'm not going to write the group numbers up there. Uh, they're already on your periodic table. What you're going to add in two different colors, just like I'm going to do, what you're going to add first is, uh, let's do valence electrons. Get rid of transition metals. Valence electrons. That's, that's what I'm writing. I'm using, I'm using red for this. Valence electrons are just all, the ones that are on the, the outermost electrons of an atom. The outermost electrons of an atom are, are important because they tend to react, right? That's the outside of the atom. When atoms bump into each other, those are the electrons that are, that are closest to other atoms. So uh, we're just going to count. Okay, this is it really is easy. There is one valence electron here, two for group two. Three. One through eight. One through eight. The only exception there is helium. Helium only has two, and you'll 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 see that later. Uh, it's just the first energy level only holds two electrons. So later on we'll look at that. But for uh, the number of valence electrons, if you want to quickly say, oh, I know carbon. I know how many valence electrons carbon has. Well, carbon's right here, right? Carbon's in group 14. So you would, look at, you, you would look at it, and if you're looking at your periodic table, you've already drawn the number four up there. So there's four valence electrons for carbon. I might ask you, well, how many valence electrons does fluorine have? And you'd be, fluorine, okay, fluorine's element nine. It's, it's right here on the periodic table. It's in group 17. It has seven valence electrons. So something, and then you could go down farther, Sulfur, right? Sulfur here is in group 16. It's element 32. You can find sulfur and you'd say, oh, it, it has six valence electrons. So that counting valence electrons or, or saying how many they have is as easy as that. Next thing. We're going to be predicting ionic charge. We need to be able to do this. You, you need to be kind of familiar with the charges that some atoms typically form in order that you can, you can look at the name of a compound and you could tell what its formula is. So again, you're going to just write this in a different color to get used to that. We're predicting ionic charge. I'm using, I'm using blue, just, just like this, but you pick your color. Uh, group one. We're going to predict a plus one charge. So if I ask you, sodium, right? We got sodium over here. We got sodium. How many? How many? Uh, excuse me. What is the predicted charge for sodium in a compound? You'd be like, oh, sodium. It's it's here in group one. It's a plus one. I predict. Uh, if I asked you about magnesium, right, right next to sodium, please find magnesium. Element twelve. It's in group two. You'd say, oh, it's plus two. Right. Any any element that you see that's in group two, 
you're going to predict a plus two charge. Uh, then uh, again, we are going to we're jumping past the transition metals, and now we're going to groups 13 through 18 again. This is plus three, right? So if I pick boron or um, aluminum or gallium, it would be it's you're predicting a plus three charge. Next one, you're probably guessing now, is plus four. That's true. That's true, especially as you get lower in that group. Lower in that group, you should find PB, that's lead. Lead's a metal. Look, metals tend to form these positive charges. Um, but I'd like you to also indicate that minus four is possible as well. Minus four is not possible for those ones at the bottom, but maybe the ones toward the top they could have this minus four charge. So plus four or minus four. Next group, we can see, okay, we've, we've kind of hit this turning point here. So group 14 is either plus four or minus four. So you can guess the next group, if we're trying to look for the low numbers, would be minus three. So if we look at group 15, you wrote minus three. Group 16, run out of room, minus two. So group 17 is minus one. And that only leaves for that last group, and, and this last group is a really special group. Last group is zero. We're not predicting any charge for helium or neon or argon or krypton, any of these. So we predict no charge. Those are called the noble gases. That's the name of that family. And they are stable. They don't give up their electrons. They don't take in electrons. As we go to naming compounds, you're not going to see many uh, compounds uh, with noble gases. There are some exceptions because humans are pretty good at making new things. Uh, those are our predicted charges. So keep in mind what these charges mean. If you see a negative one for fluorine or chlorine, that means that fluorine and chlorine tend to gain an electron in a chemical reaction. Non-metals tend to gain electrons. So oxygen tends to gain two, and sulfur as well. Nitrogen would tend to gain three. Um, this, is, this is just the start. So thank you.